In this lesson, we examine the process of creating and editing vector data. We'll start with adding data recorded in a comma-separated value, or CSV file. We'll use that imported data to create a new shape file and trace out features, such as a site boundary. Then I'll show you a great tool to create a grid of points to represent sampling locations. Finally, we'll explore tools for selecting subsets of geospatial data and creating new shape files from them. This includes selecting subsets of data based on their location or attributes and exporting that selection to a new file. The lesson ends with an exploration of how to clip data in one file based on the boundaries in a different file. Throughout the lesson, we'll also examine various ways of labeling and symbolizing vector data. As always, timestamps are available in the description so you can jump from section to section. Okay, let's get started. Adding CSV data to QGIS is a relatively straightforward and simple process. We'll begin by clicking the Layer drop-down menu and Adding Layer. And we're going to choose the Add Delimited Text layer. This will open up a new pop-up window and we simply navigate to that CSV file. I've simply named mine Points and it's a basic CSV file that has a description and then a northing and easting coordinate for each point. We can go ahead and check these dropdowns. They're usually good, particularly the file format and the record and field options. However, the geometry definition may need some work. It is flipped easting and northing. For me, my X field is northing and my Y field is easting. The coordinate system is good, but if you're using a different one, you'll obviously want to choose that. With all of these parameters set, we hit add, then close and we can see our points have been added. Now it's important to remember that this has not created an actual vector file. It has simply added these points to this QGIS document. Now we can go ahead and symbolize this so we can see what each of these points mean. So we can see here we could go ahead and change if we wanted to colors and, and, and sizes of these points. It's not really what we're after right now, so we'll go to the labels, and we do want single labels for each point. It automatically chose the description, and so as we can see now that these points represent points of a boundary. Now with these points in our layers panel, we could go ahead and create an actual shapefile if we wanted to. But we're not gonna worry about that right now because all we wanna do is use these points to trace in a polygon representing this boundary. Now we'll discuss creating a new shapefile and tracing a boundary into that shapefile based on these imported points. So the first thing we need to do is create a new layer. So we go to the layer dropdown, create layer sub dropdown menu, new shapefile layer. And we want to make sure that the geometry type is correctly set to polygon. We'll go ahead and name this, call it boundary. Go ahead and as always check your coordinate system. I'm using a UTM coordinate system, but you can use whatever you need to. Let's go ahead and also put a description field in here. We'll keep it as type text and give it a length of 20 characters. We'll add this and what we can do with this is enter an attribute into the shapefile we're about to create that would allow us to then label or display a label of what this feature is. Click OK to create. We see it appears in our layers panel down here and we can come up to the editing toolbar, click the pencil tool to toggle editing on, and we're going to create or add a polygon feature, so we click that button as well. Now, I am going to have snapping on, because as I move my cursor around these points, it doesn't lock to it, and I wanna use the snapping function to lock my cursor to these points as I create them. Now, if you don't see the snapping toolbar, you'll need to go to view, toolbars and turn on snapping toolbar. So view toolbars, turn on the snapping toolbar and then of course you can click and drag it and lock it to your interface which is what I do. Make sure that enable snapping is on, come down here to the first point, click once, move your mouse, click a second time and you've started creating your boundary file. So I'll just go ahead and click on each of these allowing my cursor to auto lock to that point and now that I'm finished, I will right click and that'll allow me to enter information into any attribute fields. For instance, we created a description one and I want to call this boundary. So I'll type that in, click OK. We'll save our edits and then we'll toggle off our editing. You've now digitized or traced the features from that imported CSV file into a new shapefile. And in this case, that's representing a boundary. 
Once we have our boundary trace, there's a number of operations we might want to do with it. Well, for instance, we might want to create a series of regularly spaced points within that boundary to represent sample locations. QGIS comes with a really interesting tool to do that. So let's go to our processing toolbar here and type in regular points. And what this does is it creates a grid of regularly spaced points. First thing we'll need to do is select the input extent. So I'm going to use the extent of one of our layers, in this case, the boundary. Boundary. And I'm going to space these about 25 meters apart and initially offset them from the sides of the boundary by about 5 meters. Make sure the coordinate system is correct and then save this as a file. Of course, make sure that you have shape file selected. I'm going to call this points begin as I like to create a new shape file for each step of the process that I'm going through. We have open output file after running algorithm checked once we hit run. When it finishes, we can close this window and we can see our grid of regularly spaced points. They're 25 meters apart. We can go ahead and measure these real quick. And if we have snapping on, we'll see that they are 25 meters apart. So that is fantastic. Now, of course, we can see that some of these have fallen outside the boundary. So we can go ahead and edit those relatively quickly by editing this file. And instead of creating new points or adding points, we would select the vertex tool. Click that and drag out a rectangle. Everything that is selected will be deleted once you hit the delete key. Now we can do this with any other points that fall outside the boundary. Go ahead and save your edits and stop editing. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add coordinates, X and Y coordinates to each point within the shapefile. Again, QGIS has a really nifty tool for doing this. So search for the add geometry attributes, double click on it. And as you can see, our input layer is already accurately chosen because we've selected it in the layers panel. We're going to calculate these coordinates based on the layers coordinate system. And we're going to go ahead and save a new file. Again, make sure it's saving to a shape file. Once you've selected this once, it should automatically be selected again. Let's name this points coordinate. Click save. And if we have the open output file check on, once we run it, it will add a new layer of those points. We can go ahead and turn the other ones off. You can see they're still highlighted. If we open this attribute table, we'll see we now have X and Y coordinates automatically added. Now, if we click these to arrange them by sort of lowest to highest value, we'll see we actually have a number of null values. So we want to go ahead and delete those because those are the records based on the points that we already deleted. So the geometries have been deleted, but the records within the spreadsheet or the attribute table attached to the shapefile still exist. And that can be useful, but for us right now, we want to get rid of that. So to delete these fields, we simply drag down the numbers to select them all. Make sure you've only select the ones with null values. And then we have our little trash can icon. If we click this, those all go away. So those are no longer a part of this data set. We can go ahead and save and exit editing. And now we have our points representing sampling locations at a 25 meter interval with coordinates embedded in that attribute table. The final thing that I'd like to do is assign a unique identifier. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to open the attribute table and we're gonna start editing and we're going to add a field. So new field, we're gonna name this STP ID and we want this to be a text field. We want it to be 10 to 20 uh, digits long because what we're going to do, the reason we want text string is because we're gonna have letters STP and we're gonna have numbers one, two, three, four, and so forth. Click okay and we can see this has been added. Now what I like to do when I'm about to populate this field is I like to save it and sometimes I'll even stop editing and start editing again. I just want to make sure that everything is being saved appropriately. So the way we populate this with a sequential uh, set of unique identifiers is we're going to use the field calculator. So if we open that up, we'll see a new window. The field calculator is an extremely powerful tool that we'll use multiple times throughout this course and in other tutorials. Uh, what we're going to do now, of course, update that existing field that we just created. And we're going to do this with a very simple expression. Now we want our expression to start with a text string, STP. And the way we sort of tell QGIS that this is a text string, in other words, this is going to be the same for each attribute field, 
is we enclose it in single quotations. So STP underscore. And then we're going to use the concatenation to, whoops, just once, to number each row. So row number. So this is our expression. And we can see down here in the output preview, we're going to have in each of those attributes STP underscore one, two, three, so on and so forth. Click OK. And here we have it. We've seen these have now updated. So we can close this. We can save our edits. We can stop editing. And if we want to see these attributes labeled on top of our points, we can go back to our layer styling and the labels tab, single labels, and go ahead and choose STP ID. Those are hard to read, so we'll draw a text buffer. And now we can see one, two, three, on and on and on, all the way down to our 115th shovel test. So a very nice way of doing this. Joining tabular data to your vector data, in this case a point file representing sampling locations or shovel test pits, is a really fast way of updating a data set. So the way we do this is we would add a layer, in this case another delimited text layer. We will navigate to this, we can find it. In this case we're joining the results of the field work. So did these come back positive or negative? Did they find something or not? Click OK. For the most part, this is going to be correct. File format and record and field options will not be needed to change. You may have this selected as point coordinates, but there's no geometry. We can see this down here. It's simply a column representing the unique identifier we created in a previous uh, step. And then the results, are they positive, are they negative? So go ahead and click Add and Close. And now we need to associate or join that attribute data, those results data, to these coordinate points. The way we do that is we go into the Properties panel and we click on the Joins tab. We don't have any joins here, so we want to add one. And the Join layer, what we're joining to this layer is the STP results. And so the Join field, what field in your data and what field in the spreadsheet are the same and it's the STP ID. And so we'll cache join in virtual layer. And what this will do once we click OK, apply, OK, if we open up the attribute table of those points, we'll see we now have results. Now if we want to save this, we would then export this as a new layer because that join only exists in this QGIS document. If we don't export this as a new layer, we're not hard coding those results into the shapefile. So let's go ahead and create a new point shapefile. I'm going to call it STP final. This is the final. Make sure it's the correct coordinate system. It is. Everything else is fine. Click OK. Overwrite file because I had already saved this previously. Success. So let's go ahead and turn off everything else. Here we have our STP final. If we open up the attribute table, we can see we have results, we have unique IDs, we have everything here. Let's go ahead and represent these shovel tests by whether they were positive or negative. And the way we do that is in the layer styling panel over here. So we don't want a single symbol, we want categorized symbols. And the value we're going to use are those STP result values. So let's classify our results, and here we have three. There are no all other values because we know in this field every record has either a negative or a positive value so we can turn that off let's go ahead and turn the positive double click on the symbol and you can click a different symbol let's make it green go back look on our map we can double click this make it red Go back, and now we have a map showing very quickly which were positive and which were negative. And of course, if we wanted to, we could also label these, perhaps with that unique ID. And we can use and fiddle around with some of these other settings to determine how we position things. We'll get into all of this in another lesson. But at this point, we now have our points representing sample locations, in this case shovel tests, and we've been able to represent them as either positive or negative. Our final portion for this lecture is going to look at creating new shapefiles from subsets of larger data sets. 
This is very common. You're going to download data sets from warehouses, whether they're state warehouses, federal warehouses, or even private warehouses. Oftentimes they're going to contain way more data covering a larger area than the study area you're working in. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at three ways of selecting data and creating a new shapefile that only has that portion of the data you want to work with. And so what we're going to set up here, or our case study, is we only want to look at the cemeteries within one county. So here we have two data sets in QGIS, again available to download in the description. We have the counties for the state of Florida outlined in black. We've made sure that the inside, the fill, is transparent and we have the cemeteries. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to extract features by attribute value. So we're going to open the attribute table and we're going to see there's all sorts of different attributes here. We can use the county, right? We want only cemeteries in Alachua County. So we can select features using an expression. We're going to create an expression. So what we're going to look at here are fields in the county. So we double click this. We want to look for values in the county field that equals, just look at all of them, Alachua. So what I've done here is to create this expression, I've just double clicked on county, which entered that, equals, and then I've gotten all the unique values. So these are all the values that show up in the county column of the attribute table. And again, I just double clicked Alachua. So when I click select features, automatically and we can close this and even exit out of the attribute table and we can now see that all of the features that have a value in their attribute table that says they are located in Alachua County are now highlighted. We can immediately create a new shapefile from this by clicking export and choosing save selected features as. What this does is it creates a new shapefile but only enters those selected features into that new shapefile. So we can create an Alachua Cemeteries, and I'm going to add attributes to the end here so we know where it came from. Everything else is correct except I want to change my coordinate system as usual. Now if I click OK, I can turn off the cemeteries and I can see I only have cemeteries in Alachua County. Now we can also work with the county itself, so we can select features based on another data sets boundaries. So this would work for instance if I only needed the features, in this case cemeteries, from a specific boundary. So let's go ahead and highlight the county and then we're going to go ahead and only choose Alachua County. So we're going to click on that and, and now we can create a new shapefile from that selection. We're going to call that Alachua County. We're going to give it a new coordinate system as we're creating these new data sets, we're already being careful to push them into our working coordinate system for our project. I'll overwrite that because I've already saved it. And now we can do something really interesting. Let's go ahead and clear the selection from all fields or all data. And we can see again that we have the same problem. So we only have Alachua County. That's good. We can, in fact, make this again a transparent fill so it looks similar we can zoom in a little bit by using the mouse wheel now we want to select those cemeteries that are only within this boundary so we can do this with a couple tools we can do select by location double click this and we would select features from that cemetery data set that intersect Alachua County and so when we click run on this, all this will do is simply select those cemeteries that fall within the boundary of this document. And if we wanted to, we could then export this and that would create a new shapefile with just those cemeteries. We can shorten this process if we are confident that running that selection will produce the results we want. We can do extract by location. Let's turn off all selection and let's basically run the same process, right? We're extracting features from the cemetery data set that intersect Alachua County. We can go ahead and create a temporary file and hit run. Close this out, turn off our cemeteries, and we've now created yet another new file representing the same thing. So what we've done here is we've created a sub-selection of a larger data set that can be really useful if we want to constrain or reduce or just get rid of extraneous data that we don't need.
The final part of this lesson looks at clipping vector data. Let's turn on the Major Roads data set. We'll use the Alachua County shapefile to create a new shapefile of Major Roads clipped to the boundaries of Alachua County. Might be helpful if you're having trouble seeing Alachua County to go ahead and change its stroke width just so it stands out a little bit more. Clipping refers to the process of extracting features from an input file by the feature in a clip file. So let's click on the processing toolbar and search for clip. Go ahead and double click click under vector overlay to open this tool. Select major roads as the input layer and select Alachua County as the overlay layer. You can choose to create a temporary file or save the output to a permanent file. I'll save this to a temporary file. So click run and once that's complete, go ahead and click the close button. Let's turn off the original major roads data set and we can see here that we have clipped the major roads that only occur or are only present within Alachua County. As always, links to location of data are in the description. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to get future updates. Until next time, keep mapping the past.